um, and great to be here with everybody. Um, you know, we, we really enjoy doing these, doing these workshops and, uh, and, and hopefully you find it valuable. I mean, ultimately that's, that is my job here today is to try to provide some value to you guys as, as fellow founders out there fighting a the good fight. So hopefully I can do that. Uh, we've got, uh, Calvin here as well. He's joining me on, on the forecaster side. So he'll be there, you know, kind of helping, uh, you know, with questions in the chat, thing, th things like that. So, um, yeah, just we're, we're, we're both excited and, and I'll go ahead and share my screen uh, and we'll we'll get started. So let me get it situated here. OK. So um, like, like Jenna said, what we're going to talk about today is the power of a, of a great financial model. And what this means for us is, is really kind of trying to you know convince you all like why should you spend your time building building a financial model what can it actually do for you um because i know if you're anything like me you know if, as a founder you've got uh, limited time let's just say you don't have enough time to do everything and uh and so you know that's really that's really my goal today is just kind of hopefully you know um illuminate what can a financial model do for us and, and how can we get one get one built and it's a it's certainly a topic that I think is, is very near and dear to me. You know, Jenna mentioned I'm a, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've been through Techstars twice. I've started a few different technology companies. My first one failed. You know, I, I started a company. I ran it for three years. It failed. I know what that's like. Um, you know, I spent four years working fractionally as a head of finance for startups in between my two companies. And then that's what, what led me to build, uh, build Forecaster. So, you know, financial modeling is definitely something that, uh, you know, I, I know really well, I've done a lot of, I've helped a lot of companies kind of run the finance function. Um, so, so, you know, that kind of what gives me the right, I guess, to, to be up here, you know, speaking to you guys today, Logan, Logan, there's my co-founder. Um, and, and just so everybody knows, you know, I mean, like we, we started a whole company around this stuff, you know, Forecaster is an online financial model. It's an alternative to Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets when it comes to building and managing a financial model. So, you know, I, I, I do, you know, believe that it makes it a lot easier. It just kind of lowers the barriers to entry. It, it makes it a lot more visual. It's a lot more kind of standardized and stuff like that. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a great potential solution. So if you, if you do decide, you know, coming off of this, that you want to build a financial model for your company, you know, I certainly encourage you uh, to, to check out Forecaster. Calvin can, can put a link in the, in the chat there if you want to check it out. We've got a special discount that we offer 25% off to, to Grandma Walker founders. Uh, but I also just want to say, like, please don't feel pressured to, to do that. Like, I'm not, I'm not here to sell you on, on Forecaster. I'm here to, you know, to, to try to, you know, um, educate and, and provide some value around financial modeling. So just wanted to say, say that as well. Um, as far as what we are going to talk about today, uh, we're first going to talk about the why. We're really going to focus on why should we do this? Why should we build a model? Then we're going to look at what success looks like. So like, you know, like we're going to walk through an investor grade financial model and we're going to say, OK, what makes this a great model? And we're going to use it kind of as a management team. We're going to explore, you know, using a financial model for our company. And then we'll talk a lot about how to build your own and, and how to use it uh, effectively. And this is certainly, you know, where Forecaster can come in, whether you decide to become a customer or not. You know, we have a lot of templates. Calvin can, can link those. We also have just a lot of great education kind of online video content, written content, that kind of stuff. So we'll definitely be there for you every step of the way, um, you know, whether you decide to kind of do it yourself in a spreadsheet or you decide to, to check out um, you know, Forecaster, we're here for you. We'll talk about, you know, how to, how to do these things as well. So, um, and then the last thing I would say is if you have a question or something like that, please do, uh, you know, don't, don't be shy, you know, please do put it in the chat or, or, uh, or feel free to raise your hand. If, if, I don't know if, if, if folks can come off mute or not on their own, but, um, you know, happy to take those as, as, we, as we go, really. Um, cause I'm, I'm here to, I'm here to help you guys. Um, so what is a financial model, right? That's a term that I think it's used a lot, right? What, what is a model? What, uh, you know, what, what how do, how can we define it now? One, um, I think a really helpful kind of analogy is, is this, and this is, you know, this is, uh, kind of bear with me here for a second. This is how cars used to be built, right? This is, you know, a process that was done in kind of the middle uh, 20th century where cars would be built out of clay. You know, if you wanted to build a car, you'd build like an eighth scale clay model of the car, and then you'd build the actual car, and then you'd, you know, test it on a track, and it would inevitably not work, and you'd have to go back to the drawing board. And it's this 
kind of crazy process, but it's how we used to do it. And, uh, and it's really expensive and it's really time consuming. And, you know, it's not, not, uh, not very efficient. And, and we don't do it that way anymore. You know, we, we've got software that, that, do it, that, that does a lot of that for us. You know, we build cars using CAD systems and virtual systems and they know everything about the car. And so you can, you can iterate on the car a lot quicker and you can get the car to market a lot faster with a lot less money. You know, it's, it's a lot quicker, it's a lot less money and nobody gets hurt. Um, and, and this is how we think about building a financial model for your company. It's, it's really like a business simulator. It, it should essentially allow you to take the business on a virtual test track. You know, it should allow you to kind of see how does this business perform in a, in a variety of environments, like, you know, and answer a lot of questions for the for you, right? It's like, how, how do I acquire customers? And what is that going to look like? And how many customers do I need to hit my, my revenue milestones? Or, when, when might I become profitable with this company based on this headcount or, you know, things like that, right? It allows you to simulate that business into the future so that you can make better decisions and so that you can kind of, you know, put, uh, you know, put, um, put investors in the, in the seat next to you, right? And like, and, and, uh, and, and give them that same treatment, you know, kind of help, help you tell your story. So, but, but, it, but I think, think about it like that. Think about something that kind of simulates your business uh, into, the, into the future. Uh, and, and this is largely, I, I think, uh, worthwhile for, for a couple of reasons. One is really about the fundraising. You know, ultimately, uh, when we're raising capital, our, our job is to essentially you know, build trust and build confidence and impress investors you know, so that they can, they can write an, us a check. You know, I'm, out, I'm out here doing this right now. I'm in San Francisco raising our Series A uh, for a forecaster. And so uh, we're doing a lot of this right now. But you know, investors are they tend to be finance people, you know, they tend to be numbers people. And so we found that if you can really tell your story in a way that resonates with them, you kind of tell it in their language, it has a tendency to really resonate and to drive conversion. Um, and it's a really useful tool for figuring out like how much capital you actually need to raise, you know, how much money is it going to take for you to hit your milestones, that kind of thing. Um, and then lastly, you know, on the fundraising side, I think it's something that Really, for a lot of earlier stage companies, you know, we've we've got 550 uh, customers at Forecaster now, and they're all uh, kind of seed to Series B startups. A lot of those earlier customers, you know, there's a lot of founders still out there trying to raise capital without a financial model. And uh, I think if if you really kind of take this to heart, you really build a financial model for your company. Uh, it, it's gonna it's gonna pay dividends in the sense that it's gonna separate you from everybody else. Like it's a competitive process raising venture dollars. Um, and so anything you can do, I think, to like separate yourself from the pack, to, 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 to stick out um, is well worth the time. And I think financial model is, is going to be one of those things if you can really master it. Um, but, the, but the real value of, of building a model is, is, is allowing you to make better decisions. You know, it's, it's trying to take a more kind of linear path towards success. You know, if, if a financial model it doesn't, uh, it doesn't make any decisions for you. It doesn't tell you any answers, but it, it provides, I think, a really healthy framework for, uh, for making decisions about your business, for you know, deciding on um, like your, your hiring plan or your revenue milestones, your growth targets, you know, understanding what your runway is so that you can either you know, kick off a fundraise or, or maybe make some cuts or, or, or switch things up on revenue. There's a lot of things that kind of come down to financially, how, how healthy is the business, then a model can be a great way to like manage that financial health, to set your growth targets, to, to plan your cash. So that's, uh, that's what I would say are kind of the real, the, the, the real value, you know, of, of having a financial model. So what is the, what is the output of the financial model, right? So like, you know, you've got the financial model, which is this simulator. It's essentially like this you know, mathematical representation of the business. It's, it's this engine that essentially turns inputs into outputs. You know, your inputs are, are, are your assumptions, like your assumptions about conversion and price and, and retention and hiring plan, all your assumptions, you know, about the business. But what it's going to spit out is, is a set of uh, financial projections. So I'll set out, you know, income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement. Uh, those are the three main, you know, financial statements that every company reports on for the most part. You know, this is like if you have an accounting solution set up, this, these are the statements that they would report on. And, and it's really important that your financial model you know, 
spit out all three of these statements. Uh, and that goes back to the main two use cases, you know, on the investor side, it's what's expected of you, you know? And so investors are going to want to see a financial model that has all three statements represented because they know that's kind of the, it's like the uh, financial underpinnings of, of, of business. It's, it's how finance professionals essentially read the health of the business. Um, and, but then on the accounting side, it's really important that your that your accounting and like what's been done as well as your forecast speaks the same language, speaks kind of apples to apples because you want to compare them. You essentially like you're setting goals each month, each quarter. You want to be able to compare how are those, you know, how are you, how are you stacking up against those goals? And if you missed certain goals, whether they're like expense, maybe you went over budget or on the revenue side, you came in light. It's kind of a forcing function for you to say, hey, okay, why did I miss that goal? You know, what, what went on there? Was that just an anomaly and I can ignore it? Or is that like a trend that I should account for? You know, what's going on there? So um, you really want this set of kind of financial projections, you know, uh, otherwise known as a forecast or, or that kind of thing. Um, and another aspect of it is it should really be monthly and it should go out the next five years. Um, you know, investors want to see kind of what the, what the big future of the business looks like. So five years gives them that picture. You know, I think you as a founder, you don't need to worry about anything really outside the next like 18 to 24 months. Like that's operationally, I think, where you can actually get a sense of what's going on. Beyond that, it's really just kind of storytelling. It's really just, you know, kind of helping you tell that narrative of how the company becomes, you know, sufficiently large. So that's what we're looking for as far as the output. Uh, and, then the, and then there's the question of, of kind of where should we put our focus, right? So, I mean, a financial model, it can be kind of a complicated thing. There's a lot of moving parts. You know, you've got the inputs, you've got all the calculations, you've got the projections, you know, on the input side, you've got different aspects of the business. You know, you got revenue, you got expenses, et cetera. So, you know, it's, imp it's important to kind of think about, you know, what's important in, in the financial model. And uh, we really believe that revenue is, is the most important piece of the model. You know, ultimately, um, Revenue is kind of what you get judged on as a, as a startup founder, you know, um, it's, it's, it's really the metric that most investors are looking at when it comes to uh, kind of evaluating your business. And it's actually the reason why most businesses fail. Most, most startups fail because they're not able to generate enough revenue quickly enough to either become profitable or attract new investment. You know, the, they, they end up running out of cash a lot of times, I think really just because they're, they're not able to generate that revenue. And so it's really more of a, of a symptom and not the root cause. Revenue is really kind of the root cause. And it's kind of a catch-22 in startups because revenue is this thing that's really important that you're judged on, but it's also this thing that you can't really control, you know, that you can't force anybody, you know, legally to give you money. Um, and, and so it's, it's a difficult thing. You can't control it, but you have to, you have to drive it. You have to optimize for it. And so this is why the, the revenue formula uh, is something that's really, really important. If you're building a financial model, if you're building a business, you really want to understand like, how do you acquire customers? How do you monetize those customers? That's what we're going to call the revenue formula so that you can drive it, you know, because you ultimately need to optimize that to drive it as much as possible. So that's the first kind of stop on the journey If um, is it, when you're building a financial model is really making sure that you've got a strong handle on, on the revenue formula. So that, that's what we're going to do here right now is we're just going to like kind of walk through what is the revenue formula, you know, uh, just an example of one, I guess I should say. And then we're going to jump into uh, into a model. So we're going to jump into uh, to an actual financial model. So but this this is an example of a revenue formula. This would be a revenue formula for uh, a, a monthly subscription business. You know, we could say this is like Netflix, essentially. Uh, but every business is a little different. Every business would have their own revenue model. They do come in very kind of like standard shapes and sizes, you know, based on like your business model. Um, but, it, but everyone's a little bit different. And so you kind of have to think through, you know, well, what is my, you know, revenue formula? But, but here's, here's kind of how it works. So you take something like revenue, which is just a metric, but there's a lot packaged in there, you know, and you're, and you're essentially wanting to break that down. So you could describe revenue as, as, a, as a formula, saying that it's, you know, subscribers times price, so price and quantity, you know, price is something that we can control. It's something that we set. So we can call that an input. That's a driver. You know, subscribers is not something that we can control and we can break it down. So we, we, we try to break it down 
to, you know, subscribers that were here last month, minus the ones we lost, plus the ones we gained. You know, we can take that and break down the ones we lost last month as the ones from last month multiplied by the, the churn rate. Um, and we can say the churn rate's a driver. You know, we know that's going to make a big impact on revenue, and it's not really something we can break down any further. But on the acquisition side, there's a lot, we can go a lot deeper. You know, we can break up our new subscribers by channel, like Google, email, and Facebook. And then we can have, then we have to describe how do those channels work? Like what's kind of the, what's kind of the funnel that, that, that those channels work in? And so maybe, maybe it's a paid advertising channel. So, you know, you take the monthly budget, you divide it by the cost per click, that gets you the traffic, the traffic times the conversion gets you the new subscribers. You know, so you're kind of, you're, you're, you're essentially just trying to break revenue down into all its subcomponents, these metrics that drive revenue so that you can understand it, so that you can understand like what metrics are the most important for, for driving revenue. Is it conversion? Is it churn? Is it price? You know, um, and, and how can we actually, how can we, how can we drive revenue? You know, if, if, if we don't have the revenue formula, it might not be very obvious what we can do to drive revenue. But if we have a revenue formula like this, you know, we can say, okay, well, if price went up, revenue would go up. If churn went down, revenue would go up. If conversion went up, if budget went up, if cost per click went down. So there's these different, you know, levers that we have to pull and, and, and kind of drive revenue. And that's, that's the name of the game. Like that's, that's what financial modeling is all about is like, is really understanding the underlying drivers of your business so that you can then better affect change on those drivers so that you can, you know, so that you can ultimately drive more revenue more quickly in the business. So you can attract new investments so you can become profitable so you can, so you can scale the business. So um, hopefully that makes, makes some sense. Um, and, and if you're out there uh, and you've got a very complicated business model and you're saying, Hey, you know, this, this looks so nice, clean and easy for someone like Netflix, but my business is, is pretty complicated. Uh, you're not you're not alone. Uh, there there are a lot of complicated business models out there, and some are a lot more complex than the one that we're that we're seeing on the screen. Uh, I think it's something that um, you know we at Forecaster could certainly help you out with a, a lot as experts. You know we've built uh, built models for uh, I guess close to 700 companies now, and uh, there's a lot of different shapes and sizes. So I can at least attest that every company can kind of document the revenue formula, um, and some are some are easier than 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 others, but. Um, any, any questions we got so far about kind of revenue formulas or the, or the, or the, you know, why we build models, things like that before we, um, jump into the, the model walkthrough. Uh, hey, Steven, I have a question. Sure. So how do you know how to build the model? How do you know how to build the model? Can yeah. you elaborate a little bit? Let's see if I can elaborate. So I get the distinction of the metrics and the inputs here, yeah. right? But as a startup, we're pivoting and moving so fast, right? We've been B2B, mm. we've been B2C. Now we're starting out B2B and a B2C and moving B2B. So if we're going to show, say, three years projected out, and we're going to be tracking on one and then the other, how do we build the model? Yeah, I just get really, really stuck on this. Yeah, I think I, I think I'm picking up what you're putting down now. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And the way I understand the question is, you know, things are changing all the time in the startup. And so, you know, if I build the model one way and then, you know, the next day comes and we're doing something different, then don't I just have to rebuild it? It's out of date, you know, and, and how, how can I build a model that like scales for years when I've not I'm not sure what we're going to maybe be doing three, six months from now. And, and I think um, you're definitely not alone in those feelings either. You know, I think, you know, even for me, been, been, been in my business now for three years, I still feel like that a lot of ways is that, you know, things are, things are always changing. So a couple of things to hit on here. One is really, uh, I think the, the key to model building for early stage companies is simplicity. Like you, you, your goal is not to completely kind of like, uh, represent all aspects of the company in the model. You really just want a simple model that you can get started with to, to use to help with some decision making. Um, and and so we preach what we call the MVP model, which is like think about your model like you think about your product. Like things are always going to change. You may have to completely rebuild your product because the market didn't want it. But like you've got to bring a product to market, and you can't wait for the market to tell you what it wants. So you have to build the MVP product push it into the market, get data from the market and iterate on the product. 
And you want to do the same thing with the model, just build a simple model, you know, push it into the market by, by that. I mean, just like be running the business and then commit yourself to revisiting the model on the month to month basis to ask yourself, have things materially changed? And if things have materially changed, you need to iterate the model to match the business like you would iterate your product, you know, to match the market. So hopefully that that helps you and gives you a sense. Uh, but then the other the other bit of it is like, and I'll just be really honest about this, like model building is it's a technical thing. It's a technical function, you know? And so if you don't have uh, kind of experience in doing it or, or finance isn't, you know, something that you're really strong in, it, it can be kind of an arduous affair. I mean, I've, I mean, honestly, that's that's why I think we've had so much success as a business is that we really are experts in this and, and we can really help founders build that that MVP model, get that model started in a way that just makes a lot of sense. It's a lot easier to iterate on and understand and that kind of stuff. So I think that's just one area where, um, yeah, we've, we've seen our, ourselves provide a lot of value. Uh, Le Crystal, you, you got a, a question or comment? Hi, I just have a quick question in regards to because uh, I came a little late because I was having some Zoom issues for the subs. Can you break that down and explain that for us for me, please? Yeah, totally. So, Thank so the subscribers piece of the of the revenue formula, right? It's kind of the quantity side, and we want to just break it down as much as we can. So, if we take total subscribers, we're breaking it down to like subscribers that were here last month minus the ones we've lost plus our new subscribers. But then any, anytime you get new customers, they're coming from somewhere. They're coming from some channel. They're coming from some strategy. So your job is really to kind of break that down into like, what are all the ways that we're acquiring customers? How are those working to actually acquire the customers? And then once you have that customer number, you're trying to then describe how are we monetizing that customer? What's the price that we're charging up front? What are the, what's the retention mechanism for the business? And you're trying to describe all that in a, in a formula, uh, essentially, hopefully. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, Le Leslie, yeah, you got a question? Yeah, um, I have a question. Um, we're in an interesting situation. We're going to be a global green alternative to Amazon with both products and services. And um, because in the front end, uh, if you don't have a platform built and you don't have any revenue yet, <laughs> uh, we do have five-year projections done. Um, the situation with that is our... Um, because there are thousands of products and services, we had to pretty much just take six industries and say, okay, let's focus on the six with the most sales and the most um, association with greenhouse gas reduction and basically just show that to investors. And so what we've been doing is saying, you know, hey, this is only six industries. <laughs> and because of what it takes with the e-commerce, you know, we won't be making money the first few years. And most of these investors know that. Um, what is your suggestion on what they're thinking about? We make it very clear that this is only six industries and there are thousands. And we've started doing research on some of those other ones, but we're basically hoping that they can look at that pitch deck with the with the revenue and say, yes, we can figure out that these are only six industries. They're going to be thousands, et cetera. So like just your thoughts on that, like how they view it. Is there a way that you would recommend presenting it when you know you don't have the revenue the first couple of years, which they know? And just any thoughts that you have on that? Yeah, totally. It's a, it's a great question. Um, and this is actually one of the things. So in the next session, we're going to go kind of deep on fundraising, you know, and, and financial modeling and how you use your model in a fundraising environment. So uh, don't miss the next session we do here with Grandma Walker, because I think you'll really, you'll really uh, enjoy it. But the, you know, kind of the heart of it is, you know, financial modeling is a, is a storytelling exercise when it comes to fundraising. And so, you know, you should, the goal should be essentially trying to tell that story of over time, how does the business kind of mature into these other industries? So that may be something that you would layer into the model as the model goes out into the future, you know, which would help you kind of tell that narrative. Um, and then both with decks and models, I think they're best presented and not shared. And so you really want to get into the room and you really want to talk the investor through these things. And so I think, I think the key of it really is like showing, the, showing how the business matures in the model and then talking over it to say, hey, right now we're just focused on these six industries. You know, it's going to be, we're, we're not going to generate revenue for two years. And then you see the revenue pick up as we start to, you know, penetrate into these other industries, blah, blah, blah. 
so it's, it's kind of a it's kind of a narrative thing um you know and then there's a lot of nuance about how you would actually put that into your your financial model and that'd be something we'd have to you know talk more kind of one-on-one -on -one about about how to how to actually put it into your model but that's what that's what i would think about um when i when i think about these things and the other thing you may want to think about and this i think is applicable to a lot of people here is what we just call the the law of averages which is you know which is to say it goes back to that idea around simplicity where you know if you're a business that maybe sells a bunch of SKUs or you serve a lot of different you know customers that pay different prices etc one of the best ways to keep your model simple is to use the law of averages so use an average price an average you know contract value an average order value etc to really kind of abstract away a lot of the you know noise and nuance of, and the complication of the business but still produce a model that that's accurate that's relevant that's useful you know so that's um one of the one of the yeah one of the concepts we preach here at forecast when we're building models with 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 our customers that's that's helpful and and what if you have a number of different revenue sources so let's say you have subscription fees and item listing fees and channel partner revenue do you have a way that you say is best to present those you know like from a chart standpoint like what you have here is there like a recommendation that you'd have around that yeah i think you know if you have if you have different uh revenue models which is common for a lot of folks you're just going to want to represent them separately in the model and and that's actually a perfect segue because <laughs> the business that we're going to jump into here uh, has a variety of different revenue models and we'll see how those are represented in this model and i think that can give a lot of folks an idea of how they can represent it in their model as well so spend uh you know just a a few minutes here kind of reading up uh, on on our fictitious company Beachbox uh, and then we're going to jump into uh, to the model for Beachbox and we're going to see hey how what makes this a great model and we're going to use it you know um, our, ourselves to kind of see how would we how would we use a financial model to 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 achieve our, our purposes so perfect thank you And the crystal, I see your hand up. Uh, we're gonna gotta keep moving a little bit just to make sure we we get everything. But um, but we'll hopefully get to your get to your question in just a just a minute. Well, hopefully everyone had a chance to just kind of skim over this, not going to quiz you on anything, just kind of helpful, uh, I think, to get an understanding of, uh, of the business that we're about to jump into. So uh, I'm going to jump out of the out of the classroom here and we're going to jump into the financial model. So first, we're going to look at it in uh, in Google Sheets. So this is actually so that the, the template link that Calvin shared earlier, and maybe you can pop it back in there, Calvin, uh, they look like this. So if you end up wanting to build your model in a in a spreadsheet, this can be a great way to just get a head start. Now, one thing that we're always really careful to say is you got to customize your financial model. You got to own your financial model. So you can't you can't outsource your model completely. Like you as a founder, as a CEO, you need to understand the business. The model needs to be kind of customized to you. So templates can be really helpful to kickstart you and, and, and they like take a lot of the base kind of formatting work and stuff like that out of the equation. That's what Forecaster does as well. But you really got to make sure to kind of think critically about how do you acquire customers, how do you monetize those customers, and like make sure that the model is really fit to your to your business. Um, but but here we got the Beachbox model. So just you know, kind of going through the model, what makes this a great model? You've got a nice kind of cover page here. You've got an assumptions tab. You know, and, and notice there's only four tabs in this model. It's not very complicated, but it's a really it's a really good model and. You've got this assumptions tab here where every aspect of the business is, is represented. So I've got the hiring plan, my people, my revenue streams, how I acquire customers, you know, and then I can dig into these aspects. And so, you know, on the customer acquisition side, like from the write-up, you know, we have organic traffic, we've got Facebook, we've got Google, we've got customer referrals. So we've got all these channels represented in this model. And it's a monthly model going out the next five years. Like we got 60 months in this model. It's monthly. It's going out the next five years. And we're turning that, you know, that formula into, into it, like into a forecast here, you know, like we have assumptions around 
the traffic, the web, the, the growth of the traffic. We've got assumptions around the budget, the cost per click. You know, we've got assumptions around uh, the conversion rates, you know, of, of how we're converting that traffic into customers. And so that's producing a, a subscriber forecast for, for Beachbox. Like it's telling us how we're actually getting subscribers, you know, and, and if we, you know, change these conversion rates, then we'd see, you know, uh, we'd see the forecast update. And so this is how we're going to kind of play around with, um, you know, with the customer acquisition side of the equation. And then Leslie asked about multiple business models, you know, this company has subscription revenue, they've got add-on purchases, they've got advertising as well. So on the revenue side of this model, we want to represent each one of those, you know, and we want to, and we have assumptions for subscribers like $29.99 price, 4% churn rate, you know, so that's producing our, our subscription revenue, but we've also got a $70 price and a 4% add-on rate that provides us our add-on revenue. And then we've got some assumptions around the advertising for, for that revenue as well. And so in a, in a similar sense, you're trying to represent, you know, the different ways that the company monetizes or the company kind of turns, turns customers into dollars and then forecast that monthly uh, out the next five years so that you have this kind of good operational monthly forecast. You've got a good story, kind of long-term story for investors and you're representing, you know, customer acquisition and revenue that the revenue formula, which is really important. Um, the rest of this, you know, it fall, follows suit. We're not going to go into that today. We're going to focus on revenue because that's that's the most important. Um, but just if, if we jump over to financials, you know, assumptions is where the, the, all the all the math is being done, and then financials is the output of the model. So there, here's your financial projections, like we talked about, your income statement, your balance sheet, um, and your statement of cash flows. You know, so you've got all three statements represented here. So you can see, you know, cash and runway. You can see revenue and profitability. You can scale out as the business gets larger. So that's really what you want. Um, and then, you know, a summary is also good. So you've got that kind of annual view, that zoomed out view. So you can see big picture, you know, you can share that big picture with investors. So that's something that's important as well. Um, and here we can look at that same model in, in Forecaster. So here's the Beachbox model in Forecaster much in the same way, right? You've got assumptions and you've got financials, like where the model is built and managed and then the output of the model. Um, and you've got things like customer acquisition. So you've got the channels that we're using for customer acquisition. You can open up a channel and see, you know, the budget, the cost per click, the traffic, the subscribers. It's all the same kind of math. Uh, and so it allows you to just kind of manage the business. So you got the customer acquisition side, that's feeding the revenue side, you know, much like we talked about with the revenue models, you want to show each one of them individually. So you can see subscription revenue, advertising, add-on purchases. Um, and then, you know, where, where Forecaster, I think, helps you is that like you can you can kind of build these things out of the box. You can just like you get you get, get the benefit of just kind of like triggering, you know, revenue models that are pre-configured. You don't have to necessarily build everything from scratch. Um, but same deal, like you've got customer acquisition, you've got revenue. You've got the hiring plan, right? You've got all, all that. Um, and then you've got on the financial side, the three, three big statements. Um, and you can look at it annually if you want. You can zoom out as far as you want. Um, you know, you've got that, uh, that good working model. Like what you're looking for in a model is good representation of the revenue formula, a monthly model that goes out the next five years. And it produces the three financial statements that, that accounting, you know, that accounting does and that investors expect. So that's, that's what we talk about when we say, you know, a great financial model. Now what we're going to do, though, is, is we're going to kind of dive into this model. So revenue is the most important, right? And, and, and that's something we really want to drive. And so we're going to kind of act like we're the, we're the management team of, of Beachbox, right? Like we're running Beachbox and it's our goal to, to try to, you know, um, you know, really, really win with this company. And so something we may do as a management team is we may look at kind of our outlook and say, okay, you know, here we are with, with Beachbox. We're going to get to 75 million in annual revenue in the next uh, you know, six years here. That's awesome. Um, you know, and, and so there we are like that on our current path with our current plan, that's where we're going to get. Now uh, we may as a management team say, Hey, well, we want to, we want to grow faster. We want to do better. How, what can we do to drive revenue? If driving revenue is our goal, what can we do? And so one of the things a financial model can do is help us kind of see the impact of a, of, of a variety of decisions. So one thing we might do to drive revenue is increase the price. 
So, you know, I could go in here um, and, and you can go in and edit the price. So maybe I, maybe we decide that we could charge, you know, 33% more, more money, right? Like maybe, maybe we could raise our price to $39.99 instead of $29.99. Um, and we could kind of see the impact uh, on that. And so, you know, I think one of the beauties of a financial model is, you know, if, if you try to do all this stuff in your head, it's just really, it's just really complicated. But with a model, you can kind of outsource all that. So we can say, okay, you know, we're going to raise the price to $39.99, you know, and instead of $75 million at the end of the model, we're up to $98. So quite a big, quite a big bump in, in terms of that. Uh, in terms of that annual revenue, you know, we were at 15 million here in 27. Now we're at 19, so we can we can see the impact, you know, of that change. Um, but but if we kind of continue this, you know, what we what we may think, and and many of you may may already be thinking this is like, well, you can't really just change price in a vacuum, right? If you raise the price, maybe more people are going to churn, maybe less people are going to convert as customers, and so that's kind of the next step in this is you might you know go in here and say, okay, well. You know what if churn rate went up? You know if we raise the price, churn's probably going to go up. So maybe churn goes up also by by thirty three percent. You know maybe churn goes up to to five five point three three, and and then we get to ask ourselves an interesting question: Are we still better off? You know, and and the answer is yes. You know we're at eighty seven million instead of seventy five. We're at seventeen instead of fifteen. So. Like, you know, if we're optimizing for revenue, we've got a better business, um, you know, when, if, 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 if we raise the price. Now, what we can, we, we can do on this is we can kind of keep exploring. And, that, and that's a lot of what financial modeling is at the early stage. Like, I think, uh, I think it was Lulu that said, like, you know, everything's changing and that kind of stuff. And, that's, and it's totally true. Like, and when you're building an early stage company, everything's changing. And so a model's much more about like having kind of a sandbox that you can go in there and explore like what the potential future of your business is more than it's just going to like spit out an iron clad. Like this is exactly what's going to happen over the next six months. And so it's really something we use to explore. So, so this might be something where we try to explore, like at what churn rate does, does it negate the price, the, the, the price increase, like the price increase is driving revenue up, but you know, if, if churn rate is 6%, you know, are we, are we still better off? Um, and, and the answer, you know, is yes. So we may go in and say, well, you know, what about if we're at seven and a half percent, you know, are, are we still better off? Uh, and in this case, the answer is no, we're like a little bit, we're a little bit worse off if, if, if churn rate seven and a half. And so we can use this, this type of, of, of analysis to try to figure out what, what a best path forward is for, for our business. You know, if we were running Beachbox, we may decide, uh, you know, now to run run an experiment to say, okay, well, we're going to change our price to thirty nine ninety nine. We're going to run that for three months. We're going to see the impact on churn. If churn stays been below seven and a half percent, we know that's objectively better for us in terms of revenue generation. So, like, we're going to roll that out. If if churn goes up at eight percent or higher, then we know that that's not as then we're not as good as as well off. So we're not going to do that. And so. I think a lot of what financial modeling is, is just about making like better data-driven decisions, you know, about, about the company and about what we, what we do with our companies that, uh, that, that span beyond just revenue. You know, revenue, I think is a big piece of it. And, and that's where a lot of our decision-making is done, but this has uh, implications on hiring and headcount, on expenses, on, 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 on your runway, that kind of stuff as well. So this is, this is the type of thing that, that you'd want to get in here and do. Um, now you may, uh, you may also, you know, decide to look at something like a conversion rate. So, you know, if you raise the price to $39.99, your conversion is also going to be, you know, negatively affected. So, you know, you may be, you know, wanting to come over here and say, well, kind of or organic traffic is our biggest channel. So if we looked at that and we said, you know, what if, what if organic traffic, uh, what if its conversion rate went down? You know, what if it went down? by by 33%, what kind of impact would that have um, on, on the business? And with that, we see uh, it's it's quite a bit, quite a bit lower. Or maybe let's see what happened. Hold on one second. Oh. Our organic traffic zeroed out for some reason. Let's see. Let me refresh real quick.
well, <laughs> I'm not not sure what's going on there. So you have to, uh, you get, yeah, apologies, apologies for that. I'll have to, I'll have to check that out. But uh, you get, you kind of get the idea. If the, if the conversion rate goes down, then, then, then obviously you're, you're worse off. So there's things like that you'd want to play around with on the, on the business side. You know, it's just kind of like impacts of, of revenue. The, the other way, you know, I think the thing that comes up most common is on like the people side. So if you look at, at people, you know, and, and kind of who you're hiring and when, you know, you may, uh, you may decide to kind of push hires out or pull hires in. And like on a month to month basis, you're trying to think about who are you going to hire for, for the company? Um, and so you're doing that. And, and as you do that, you'd want to go to something like cash flow to understand, you know, the implications of that. So, you know, in this case, let's see on the cash flow side, we, we don't have any, uh, any, any fundraising in here. So like we could go in on the equity side and we could say, Hey, you know, we're going to do uh, a seed round, you know, here in, in March. And then we could come back and look at, look at the cash flow there and say, okay, we raised a million bucks, but we're losing money and we run out of money in April of 2024, you know, and, uh, and we need another 500,000 to get through the end of 2024. So you know, then we're starting to ask ourselves, well, should we raise another 500,000? Are, are we comfortable, you know, running right now until March, 2024? Like you're having these kind of discussions around, um, around, around the business, around managing the cash flow, around, you know, hitting the growth targets, around how you can drive revenue. Um, hopefully, hopefully some of this stuff is, is resonating with you guys. This is essentially, I think, how, how you use a financial model to, to, to run your business uh, is really just kind of using it to, to really better understand the business and, and to attempt to make more, more data-driven decisions about the business. Um, and so now we're gonna we're gonna jump back into the into the into the um, presentation here and, and and finish out. We're gonna talk a little bit about how do we build our own model and then how do we use it uh, effectively. So as far as how you build your model, this is something that differs a little bit for for every company. So you know we we don't have uh, kind of the luxury of being able to go through every possible business model and everything like that. So when it comes down to the nitty gritty of like how the formulas work and everything. That's something where um, I do certainly encourage you to, you know, to leverage leverage us and our team if, if you'd like, uh, or, or, at a, or at the very least, um, check out some of our content. We also do model help sessions totally for free. So that's something that to consider as well. But the first thing to do is really understanding the revenue formula. So you want to map out that revenue formula. You want to try to really get an understanding of how you acquire, how you monetize, map that out. Um, and then you're going to you're going to take that formula and you're going to use it to then create that uh, customer acquisition forecast, that revenue forecast, like we saw there in Google Sheets, like we saw there in Forecaster. You want to, you know, turn that formula into like something that's 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 happening over time. Um, and and then once you have that revenue forecast, like that's really where you should focus all of your time first. Is like is building that revenue forecast and making sure you have it under control. It's, it, it's from that that everything else flows. You know, you, once you have that revenue forecast, you can ask yourself, what are the direct expenses that I have that, you know, for every dollar of revenue? You know, maybe payment processing, maybe there's input costs, et cetera. So you can make those a percentage of revenue. Um, you can also then kind of think about the people. And that's, that's usually like the biggest cost center for a lot of businesses. So think about who you're going to hire, when you're going to hire them, what you're going to pay them. You know, and that'll that'll tell you the expenses you have related to the people. Um, and then there's the other expenses. You know, you have to think through the big buckets of like, what are you going to spend on marketing? What are you going to spend on rent or, or, or what other you know, professional fees? Maybe something like that. So you think through those. So you're just kind of working your way down the business, you know, starting with customer acquisition and revenue, working your way down through expenses. Um, and then eventually uh, the balance sheet, you know, step six is, is really kind of flushing the balance sheet out for, for companies. Um, it is just true that, so the balance sheet is fairly technical. If you're not, if you're not, you know, a finance person, the balance sheet can be pretty tricky. Uh, I must say, I think that if you use our templates, that could be a great way to kind of get an understanding of a balance sheet, you know, there, if you don't already have an understanding of that. And then um, uh, it's another reason why I think forecasters is helpful for folks is it just, it takes care of that, you know, essentially for you. Um, but then once you've got the, the balance sheet elements like inventory and, and assets and liabilities, um, then your, your goal is to then organize that into the financial statement. So you're going to take all that information, which you've 
forecasted, and you're going to organize it into an income statement, a balance sheet, a statement of cash flows. And that's, that's essentially those financial projections like we saw on the financial section, uh, which is what you're going to use to make decisions, you know, make decisions on, on cash or, or revenue milestones, et, et cetera. So that's a little bit about how to build your own. Um, I know that that's just kind of tip of the iceberg stuff. Um, like I said, there will be a lot of resources you'll get from us on how to build your own model, which I think will be really helpful. It is, uh, it can be, it can, it can be a bit complicated. It, it really, it really can. Um, but this is, I think, what's applicable to everybody. And then what I want to talk about next is, is what I think is the most important. And then we'll, we'll, we'll jump to some questions. And that's what we call the monthly finance playbook. I think a, a model is really pretty useless unless you, unless you use it actively. And, and so what you want to do is once you build the model, you're going to use it to set growth targets for your company, you know, to set like your customer acquisition goals, your revenue goals, your hiring goals, you know, and then every month you're going to have that model. You're just going to put it on a shelf. You're going to go run the business, do all the things you already do. Uh, in the background, you want to have a system of tracking metrics. You need to be tracking, you know, your, your leads, your conversion, your customers, your revenue, your price, like all the metrics that drive the business you want to be tracking so that at the end of the month, you can sit down maybe with your co-founders or your leadership team and, and analyze the results. You're going to say, hey, here's what I said I was going to do. Here's my forecast. Here's what I actually did. Did I hit my goals or did I not? And if you miss some of your goals, you want to tweak the model and repeat the process. So it's this kind of circular process that you run every month. It typically will take an hour or two hours every month. We suggest like having a dedicated block on your calendar, you know, and it's just something that you do every month. So you're going to set a milestone, like maybe for raising your seed round, you're going to, you know, set that, you're going to execute the business, track the metrics, analyze the results, tweak it, you know, and so in that way, like, you know, like as our businesses change, the model should be tweaked and changed as well. The model essentially kind of like follows us along in that way. And this just really allows us to create growth targets that, you know, that are reasonable, that, that you know, that, that kind of paint a good path for the company. And it allows us to keep a beat on our runway, which is really critical, obviously, for, for keeping the business afloat. So um, this is, I think, a really critical piece of the equation is getting into the rhythm of using that model every month to to run to run the business uh and that's that's what we got so we got some time for questions here just so everybody knows the forecaster is uh it's an online platform it's an annual subscription it's typically two thousand dollars a year uh graham and walker companies get it for 25 percent off so you get it for 1500 uh, and that does include a whole 30-day white glove onboarding with our financial modeling experts and so we really we really kind of roll out the red carpet and make sure everybody gets like a model that, that works for them, that they can use to run their business and everything like that. So again, if you're interested, we'd absolutely love to, to chat with you. Please don't, please don't feel any pressure though. Um, we're, we're here to help no matter what. And yeah, we got, we got some time for questions. If we got some more, you guys already asked some great ones as we went along, but let's see. Anybody, uh, anybody got a, a question about anything we, we covered or anything like that? I have a quick question, uh, Mr. C. Yeah. You said that you do um, assist with um, helping like uh, build um, financial models, like to come and do like a consultation. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, so, so I'll tell you a little bit about what we offer as a company. So Forecaster, you know, like we're here to really help founders build financial models. So, and we'll share all this information with you. Uh, we do this thing, we, these things called model help sessions. And so this is just a free, free time that you can book with our analyst team to get, to get support, to get advice, to get help. Um, and so we'll share that link and you can book some time. And that's just 30 minutes that you have with an analyst to maybe ask them some questions about your revenue formula or, or, or get kickstarted, you know, in one of our templates, thing, thing, things like that. That's completely for free, you know, in addition to the kind of more evergreen resources that we offer around model building. And then if and then if you decide that you want to become a customer, you know, then uh, then we do that a lot, a lot more like we spend a whole 30 day process with you really digging into like understand your business, build the model, that kind of stuff, because um, we, 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 we find it, it helps to have an expert in the room. You know, it's, it's just it's a it's yeah, it's a complicated, complicated thing. So, hey, Stephen, can I tag on to that there? So you're saying on that onboarding one, it's a 30 minute basically like KYC get to know you kind of deal. Is that correct? As a 30 day. Uh, so we typically will do like a one hour call once a week for four weeks. 
Okay. We'll do like a kickoff call where we really kind of get into the business and then we'll spend the time after that, like uh, just building the model and shaping the forecast and, and that kind of thing. Okay, great. So but the, I signed up for your beta. So that 30 minute onboarding. What oh yeah, you, that's a, what, that, that's a demo. So they'll give you kind of a look into the, into the software and kind of walk you through how things work and, and that kind of thing. Okay. So we sign up with them or. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Got it. All right. I just want to make sure. I understand. And then after that, it's four weeks, one hour a week where we actually are hands on building the model together. That's correct. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Let's see. Uh, okay. Zach asks, I'm responsible for growth and revenue. We do a lot of experiments. Can you share more on your capabilities related to growth experiments and ability to track, measure, and build in growth into the model? So yeah, I think so. Experimentation is really important in modeling. So like anytime you're building a model, a big part of it is like trying to explore potential, you know, futures for, for the business. So uh, whether you build your model in a spreadsheet or forecaster, that's definitely something that you should be considering. Uh, I think in, in forecaster, we do have a lot of nice features around it. So you can absolutely do any kind of experimentation. You can do formula building. You can clone, uh, you know, different scenarios of the model and save them as different versions. So you can flip back and forth, which is really nice. Uh, of course, you can do that that in Excel as well. You just got to save different copies of, of the model. Um, but that is important. I think like beyond maybe just standing the, 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 the model up and really getting an understanding of the core business, you know, really using the model as a way to explore potential futures and which ones are better than others, you know, and, and kind of set the bounds of, of various experiments is, uh, is a really good use case. Good question. Any other any other questions uh, floating around out there while we got the time? What is session two for this? I just saw that invite come out. Oh yeah. Well, thank you for asking. So session two is all about uh, is all about fundraising, really. So we call it leverage a model to close checks. It's all about how do you actually use a financial model in a fundraising environment to increase the chances that an investor says yes. You know, we we find that investors. Um, they, they really resonate with what we call the numerical narrative, which is like telling your story with numbers. And so we talk a lot about how do you, you know, how do you, how can you get that done? Um, and it is predicated on the fact that you have a financial model. So I, I hope everybody walks away from this feeling inspired to, to, to build a model for their, for their company. You'll be glad you did. I have a question for you. Please. Um, <clears throat> Sorry to say this, um, I came in partway through, we're looking at using Forecaster, um, but um, can you tell me about Graham and Walker? You're not Forecaster, right? You use Forecaster. So can you tell me a little bit about Graham and Walker and what you guys do to add on to Forecaster? So I'm here as representing uh, Graham and Walker. Stephen is um, co-founder and CEO of Forecaster. So ah. they, we are, um, they're one of our like oldest partners. We work with them uh, quite a lot over many of our different programming and events um, over the years. And so our organization supports and empowers uh, female founders. We do accelerator programs, events like these, we do direct investments. Um, and that's kind of where Graham Walker fits into this. It's hosting um, oh, okay. wonderful partners. Yeah. Yeah. They're an amazing community of founders. I've found that we've had the the chance of working with with Grandma Walker for a few years now, and uh, it's a top shelf organization. Okay, nice. I might have been talking to you, Stephen, or someone in there about Forecaster um, previously. I do have a few questions for you directly about that. We're moving from um, my financial analyst and I are moving. We're heading towards a Series A. We've we've done our uh, we've done our C. Um, we 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 are have built Excel spreadsheets and spend our entire life on. 16 different sheets all with pivot tables trying to make all of this work and we think you're going to be way better at that a um, couple of questions um, can we do can we do churn by cohorts yeah um, we instead don't of a, instead of the overall database we don't do any cohort based financial modeling yet that is something that we'd like to get into as a company in the future because um, that's really powerful but Right now, all of our modeling is, is what we call time-based financial modeling. So your, your churn you know, is connected to kind of a, a month of time, like January of 2023, rather than like where a customer is in the life cycle. That concept, though, just generally speaking, is a powerful one for probably a lot of folks on, on this call, like, you know, kind of getting it's, it's a little bit more of a 
it's like an expert, you know, thing I would say. So it's something I would probably caution, uh, uh, you know, in building into your first financial model. But if you really kind of get, get going on it, um, you know, cohort based financial modeling is something that can provide a lot of uh, accuracy. So. So some of our um, investors or, or um, potential investors have asked for that cohort model, which we get, which we can give them. Um, is there a way for us to run those cohorts separately? Like we, we collect all that data already, um, but we have customers, it's a subscription model. Um, the average lifespan is six months, but we have people who've been here for three years and a bunch bail out in month one or two. Um, and so it makes a big difference about whether what, what percentage are out in month one, two, or three, and can we extend the can we extend the life cycle? Can we increase the LTV and that sort of thing? Um, would we? So, so your churn is based basically on the entire database, no matter how long they've been here. We're churning twelve percent of people a month or something like that, and so that's just a, a, a fixed number. Yeah, that's right. You, you can do kind of a workaround and forecaster, but that's more or less that's more or less correct for now. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, really, oh, sorry. Go for it. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm noticing a few people jumping off. So really quickly before um, the rest of you leave, I wanted to just, first of all, say uh, thank you to Stephen. And we can stick around to do some more kind of one-on-one -on -one questions for the last, or I guess we're kind of up on time. Um, but, but I wanted to just announce, uh, I'll be sending a follow-up email with all of the links that Stephen mentioned and offers um, and the recording to this as well. You'll also notice I put in the chat, our Catalyst application um, is happening our the deadline is coming up this week on the 9th the program is a free two-week uh fundraising readiness accelerator so if you want to learn more the link is there in the chat and then we're also doing a lot of in-person events this year so we're coming to seattle march 15th san francisco may 18th hopefully see you there Stephen. um and new york june 14th so uh the link to sign up for san, uh, seattle is in the chat but definitely sign up for our founder community to hear about the others and then finally, our second part of this series with Forecaster is on um, April. Oh, I put the wrong date in there. It's the first Tuesday of every month is how we're doing it. So, so the first Tuesday of April and uh, the link is also in the chat there. So again, we'll follow up with more of this information. But thank you all so much for joining us. Um, Stephen, do you have to... Ren, are you at yeah, I, yeah I do okay. have I do have a meeting but I would also like to say thank you I really appreciate the time everybody and I hope I hope that we provided some value I hope I hope, I hope it was useful to you so thanks perfect thank you see y'all